what you see here is an incredibly excellent book on proof writing. This book is a masterpiece. It's called Proofs, a long form mathematics textbook, and it's by Jay Cummings. In this video, I wanna talk about what I think about this book. And let me just tell you right now, I think it's amazing. Nothing negative to say about this book. There are a few things that I wish were different, and we'll talk about those later. Actually, just one thing I wish was different. But other than that, this book is pretty much perfect. People always tell me that I should write a math book, and sometimes I think about it, but then I look at books like this and I think, <laughs> there's no way, I just feel like I can't do better than this. Why even try, right? This is already in existence and it's a masterpiece. Gotta say something about the size of this book. Look how big it is. It's just huge. Here, let me just put another book here for comparison so you can see. So here I've got a big old calculus book, kind of like the size of maybe Stewart's Calculus or Larson's Calculus. This is the one by Swakowski. And look at the size. I mean, sure it's thicker, but this is actually a bigger book, you see. So it's, this length here is longer. And if I place it like this, you can see it's actually longer. So it's just a very, very unusual size for a math book. And I kind of like it. The author has a really good sense of humor. To my loving wife who read this entire book, except the math parts, every time I read that, I think it's funny. One of the wonderful things about this book is the content. It has really unique topics compared to other proof books out there. It starts with intuitive proofs. And then you see he throws in this little subsection, introduction to Ramsey theory then direct proofs, and then he throws in an introduction to number theory. Sets, he throws in an introduction to topology. I think that's really well-timed. And then induction, an introduction to sequences, logic, some real analysis, the contrapositive, big data, contradiction, game theory, functions, and then some cardinality. Again, the order there makes perfect sense relations, and then some group theory. And then he has other proof methods. And then he has some other cool topics thrown in here at the end. Here we have an interesting piece of mathematics. Fermat's little theorem, if a is a natural number and p is a prime, which does not divide a, then a to the p is congruent to a modulo p. And the reason I'm pointing out this particular theorem is for what j says next, quick note, the proof below will begin by saying fix a prime p. What this means is that throughout the proof, p is a single prime number. However, we are not saying that it is seven or 11 or any specific prime. Indeed, the fact that it is an arbitrary prime is important. And so that comment alone right there, at least when I was first learning to write proofs, would have saved me hours of my life. I once spent probably about six hours on a very simple linear algebra problem because I didn't understand what they meant by fix S naught. And Jay clears it up. So this is a great book and it will clear up confusions even perhaps before you have them. Then he goes to the proof here using induction. The book has really cool features, like it features pro tips, which give you advice and help solidify what you've learned. It's really cool that he did this. It also has tons of exercises. These are the exercises for chapter two. You can see there's tons here. Let's turn the page up to 20. Let's turn the page up to 35, 42 exercises. Now some chapters have less than 42, but you can see you get tons of practice. One of the downsides is that there aren't that many solutions to the exercises. So to find the solutions to the exercises, you have to go to his website, longformmath.com. And there he explains why, you know, he doesn't have all the solutions. And really what it comes down to is that a lot of professors use these books to teach and they want their students to think about the problems before they look at the answers. So they purposely omit solutions. Another reason, and this is just my opinion, this is just something that I would think about, if I was writing a book and I had to write the whole book and come up with the exercises, it is a lot of work to you know write out all the solutions to all the problems. There's a lot of extra work uh, added to the book. But the main reason they're not included in this book is because uh, most professors don't want students to have access to all of the answers. So Jay, what he did was he did a compromise. He gives you some of the solutions on his website, longformmath.com. He provides open questions after each of the exercises in each chapter. So once you finish the exercises, if you turn the page, you have open questions. These are basically unsolved problems in mathematics. I think that's really fun because 
It keeps it interesting. If it's not already interesting, this makes it even more interesting. Appendix C is absolutely a gold mine. It talks about writing proofs and it gives some really good realistic solid advice. Here he talks about, for now, be as rigorous as possible. But let me show you something else. It's also important to know your audience. As with all communication, what counts as effective proof writing depends on who will likely be reading your work. What terminology is common knowledge and what should be redefined for the reader? What level of rigor is expected or required? So basically if it's homework, you want to write it as if you were trying to convince a classmate. That's a good idea. And basically when I make math videos, I try to explain them as much as I can, pretending that the audience knows very little. Sometimes for some things, I'll assume the audience has you know some level of knowledge, some level of mathematical maturity. It really just depends on the problem. And honestly, how I feel when I make the video, sometimes if I really want to explain everything, I'll take some extra time. And sometimes I'll give a more high level explanation. But if you're taking a class on proofwriting, you're definitely going to want to show you know, as many details as possible. When I was a grad student, I took a graduate uh, level course in abstract algebra. I took two courses. And in one of the courses, I got my homework back. And there in purple crayon, it said obvious, clear. And I just felt so defeated because it took me hours to work out that proof and here my work is being criticized by someone using a purple crayon telling me that my work is obvious. What a fun story. Uh, it was funny at the time and it's still pretty funny. The point is it was a graduate level class and so at that point I was providing perhaps too much rigor for what was expected. Certain things I was discussing were obvious to the grader and probably obvious to the teacher so they did not need to be said. But if you're learning and you're just getting started, that's not something you really have to worry about. Just focus on understanding every step and writing every step and being able to justify every single detail of your proofs. It is so important that you are super rigorous and this book helps a lot. There's other really, really good books on proof writing. I have several books on proof writing, but there's a couple things that set this one apart. So one, the size of this book. I mean, look how big it is. Look at this distance here and this distance here. It's just very large. It has a big footprint. It's also very thick. This is quite possibly the thickest proof writing book I have. It's a paperback, so that's a bit of a downside, but that also means you can save on the cost. The price is unbeatable. It's probably less expensive than like 99% of other proof writing books out there. I mean, you can get this new. This is a brand new copy. You can get this new for not so much. And I will leave a link in the description to this book and other books by Jay Cummings. I have another book here, which is also excellent. This is his book on real analysis. Both of these books are written with beginners in mind and they're amazing. They're amazing. And they really make me think about writing a math book because people say, you should write a math book. And then I see books like this and I think, no, no, I shouldn't. <laughs> this is amazing. I don't see how I could do any better than this. I mean, it's just great. Anyways, enough about this book. I just wanted to show it to you because I think it will help you. Learning to write proofs is one of the hardest things you do as a math major. In fact, when you get your math degree and you, know, you finish graduate school, that's really one of the key things you learn is how to write proofs and how to read mathematics, right? You can pick up a math book, you can sit down with a pen and a paper or a pencil and paper and you can learn new math and write proofs and learn on your own. And that's a skill you get from doing lots of math and from writing lots of proofs. And this book will help you get started. Again, it's Proofs, a long form mathematics textbook by Jay Cummings. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.